Hello, Titans, Hunters, and Warlocks. Well, Guardians in general. My name is Ranchi Ram, and I'm your Titan. My name is Sly, and I'm your Hunter. And, well, Panda's your Warlock, but uh, Panda's He's not, not here. here. Yeah, he had, so. a, he had something else, some uh, out-of-tower stuff to do. Um, yep. so he's busy fighting off the hive. Yeah, that that's what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking loser. Um, <clears throat> well, what was it? <clears throat> this is going to be our uh, our special dedicated podcast just to Destiny. Yeah, but uh, it's the Destiny episode, news, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're starting off with like gaming news as usual, but uh, I'll put an annotation on screen if you want to skip just to the Destiny talk. All right. How convenient. And, uh, there's not much news because uh, a big press conference uh, game show has been happening, the uh, TGS, the Tokyo Game Show. This is where uh, most of the games that come over onto the PlayStation, your exclusives and stuff like that, that's where most of these uh, games are going to be coming from. But... Uh, uh, the first trailer, these are just uh, the trailers that I watched of games that I actually know. There's a couple of games that came out that I don't know of, like uh, Gravity Dash 2 is uh, coming out. I heard that that's got like a small cult following, but I've never actually played it myself. Like us. I think it was on the PS3. Except for yeah, like a, a minuscule uh, cult following. The difference is, is that, yeah, ours is minute. <laughs> Microscopic, it, microbial, many, if you many, will. Uh, how many followers? Uh, uh, fuck, constitutes a uh, cult. Um, I think as long as it's in the ten range and they're willing to commit suicide for you, I think it counts as a cult. Well, if you're willing to commit suicide, if you like or ever, if you do anything to interact with this con- uh, our videos in any way. That's pretty much accepting the terms and agreements that you're going to commit suicide on our whim. (laughs) Alright, well, the uh, first trailer I watched was for Persona 5. I'm actually looking forward to Persona. Uh, Kind of the reason I bought a PlayStation 4, because I found out that it's not going to be on the Xbox at all, even though they released Persona 4 Arena and Persona 4 Arena Ultimax onto the uh, Xbox 360. Ultimax? Yeah, it's just like, uh, you know how Street Fighter has a Street Fighter release, and then like three months later they re-release it with all the DLC for like 20 bucks cheaper? It's like that. Well, always wait uh, to buy your games, kids. Which is uh, Well, if they're fighters. Well, that actually goes with Destiny 2, but we'll talk about that later. Yeah, uh... Persona 5, uh, well, all these trailers have been so far in full Japanese, so... I'm going to have to just go off of what's shown in the trailer. So Persona 5 has got guns, masks, cats with absurdly large heads, and it seems like all the main characters are wearing masks, much like in Persona 4 where they all wore uh, glasses. Um, Other than that, a lot of... uh, the UI had an interesting like uh, appeal to it. It was like white and black with red, so it was like a traditional Japanese paintings kind of thing. And uh, also, it got delayed to summer of next year instead of later this year, so that sucks. That yeah, does suck. Um... Uh, yeah, you go. I'm sorry. Uh, you can just go ahead and add a cut there or something. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. um... The trailer, the two trailers that I watched, uh, they're part of a series that I actually enjoy, uh, Monster Hunter X and Monster Hunter uh, Stories. Monster Hunter X is going to come out later this year in November, which is seeming, just from the trailer alone, this isn't the first trailer that's been released, but it's the most recent one uh, being released like two days ago. Um, it's... you got to remember, though, that this is coming from the Tokyo Game Show, so the release dates, those are slated for Japanese releases. Yeah, but, I mean... And Monster it's... Hunter 4 came out, and then, like, it didn't come to the U.S. for, like, a whole year. No, I'm pretty sure it's going to be coming to us at, at the same time. Because the vi- the video itself was being covered by a, a fan from the U.S., and he said, oh, it's November. Anyway, the video itself was pretty... Uh... Explain it. it. It's like all the other Monster Hunter trailers, if you've ever seen them. It's just you, the hunter, going up against it, the monster. 
And uh, there were there were a lot of cameos from old, pre-existing monsters from previous games. Some of them that weren't in Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, but were in Monster Hunter 3 and 2, from what I under from what I understand. And there's going to be this new re revolutionary type of thing where I, I don't know if you have played Monster Hunter, okay? But if you have, you have this little buddy called a Palico, and you have several of these little cat. They're little cats that. Help you kill things, catch things, make make your life easier. If you didn't easier. play for uh, in Monster Hunter Three, they were called felines. Well, yeah, felines exist in the four too. It's just they're a roguish like palico. Anyway, yeah, you get in this particular installment of the series, you can play as a palico and make a group. Yeah, I saw that in the trailer. I was yeah. like, I don't even own a new 3DS, which I'm pretty sure it's going to be exclusive for. Yeah. Because they need a system seller. But uh, I saw and I was like, I kind of want to get a new 3DS just so that I can play a Palico. Yeah. Because I will play uh, a Palico 100% of the time if the game allows it. It, it sounded, it looked so Get me my pom-poms awesome. and cheerleader outfit. I'm going to be that cheerleader Palico in the trailer. I'm hoping, I'm hoping it doesn't uh release on the it, new console just because i would like it'd be great if it 3DS. didn't but so far there's only been two or three releases on the new 3ds that's actually going to be doing it uh that's uh -huh. another one of the trailers is that uh the legend of zelda hyrule warriors is gonna is having its 3ds release and it looks like it's for the uh, new 3ds as well because all the trailers keep showing that little the 3ds with the extra controller nub on it and i remember hearing something about it being on the new 3ds only well i have but, a uh, I have this thing on my 3DS called a Circle Pad Pro, which uh, basically it's an attachment it's, that you can get that makes it. It's a second it like, analog stick. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. You which can't is even what play the other Monster one Hunter has. without that damn thing. Because it's yeah, impossible I've, to play without it. I've d I use Longsword, so it's not really that big of a deal. But if I used, uh, if I used like a gun or something like that, it's a yeah, real pain. No, yeah, there's no way you'd be able to do it. Um. So yeah, they displayed some weapons. Uh, it doesn't appear to be any new weapons in the trailer, but there are some badass versions of current weapons. My personal favorite being the insect glaive. Uh, there was one where you like basically flick the beetle off the end of your glaive, and it shoots like a rocket. It was so awesome. <laughs> Uh, so I'm personally looking forward to I think to, we uh, get another, like, X. six or nine months of support for the uh, current Monster Hunter release, considering oh, yeah. we only just got it. Yeah, that's we're a, still going to be getting thing. some uh, steady monthly comment they, content. Uh, they've been really uh, pretty good about releasing content. And it's been free content, which is, like, you know, that's a perfect that's the perfect incentive to get someone to go back it's, and play it, game. Nintendo gets away with it, though, because they're Nintendo. Like, if it was any other... AAA company on any other console, they would be putting as many microtransactions as possible and selling the DLC to you at a price. They'd probably be charging you five bucks per weapon. Yeah, but all the DLC that they've released uh, for Monster Hunter and it's Capcom. Capcom's free. not exactly afraid of money. It's just it's great. I, I love Monster Hunter and I love. I can't wait to see what this uh, next if one brings. If the new one does end up on like all the 3DSs, I will get it and then we can uh, start playing that. Cause yeah, that I, would be fun. I kind of lost interest in the uh, in four. It just it seems like fun. the games take too much time to enjoy them. Um. Oh, and the next Monster Hunter game I want to talk about is Monster Hunter Stories, and this one is a it's a game produced in a slightly different style than previous Monster Hunter games. And Let's just from, say that if you're a modern gamer, you're gonna you're gonna you're probably not gonna like the art style as much yeah. because you're gonna miss it's, your browns, your grays. Yeah. It's it, it's got way too much color. It, way more like, than most like, modern gamers like eyes can see. Think of Wind Waker. It's like it's cell shaded, just like Wind Waker was. Um but that's not the only difference, the artistic style of it. It is uh it's an RPG. Basically is a Monster Hunter RPG. And uh, turn based specifically. Yeah, it's turn based, yeah. And um it seems from what I've read that the creators of Monster Hunter, they understand that the player, the person playing the game, isn't as interested in their own character as much as they are in the monsters themselves. So they reflected on that and said that this game will reflect heavily or feature hev heavily 
uh, information about the monsters as you fight It looks them. like Pokemon with Monster Hunter monsters. Yeah. And, and what's another thing that's different about this one in particular is you're not only fighting other monsters, but you um you ride gain them as eggs. mounts. You, yeah, you can. That's the thing. Yeah, you earn them like Pokemon, I guess. You earn the egg. The egg hatches, and then you get a baby version of whatever it is that you receive the egg from. So stuff like the Kongula, the Rathion, the Kinzu, things like that. And it's really don't forget cool. the Lagumbi. The long oh, Lagumbi is best. Uh, God. I, I was kind of hoping there would be like a, uh, uh, crap, what is it called from uh, Monster Hunter 4? The monkey, elephant. Uh, I know oh, it because uh, I love catch it. Catch a Watcha. Catch a Watcha, yeah. I love the Catch a Watcha. It's so cute. Um, it, though, it should be a plush. They should sell Catch a, catch a Watcha plushes. I would love the Catch a Watcha plush. I would hug it. And they could put uh, like one of those little uh, plastic things inside the nose so that you can like stretch it out and it whips back. Or, or you can, like, bend his ears down to cover up his eyes. Oh, yeah, they can put, like, little wire frames on the inside of the ears so that you can bend it over the face. Yeah, because his eyes, his ears have, like, those little demented-looking eyes on him for whatever reason. Like, he's a yeah, butterfly. Yeah, but if you're looking for a core Monster Hunter experience, you're best off waiting until 10 comes out or continue playing 4. Because uh, oh, yeah. Monster this Hunter is... Stories is definitely not it. Monster Hunter Stories, it's like, uh... It's like... It's not really making it a more softcore experience because it is going into turn-based RPGs, which is still a pretty hardcore system for uh, gameplay. But it's still definitely going to be easier than regular Monster Hunter. Oh, I definitely. And I'm kind of. It looks kind of like that. Dragon Quest. Yeah, that's. Uh, it looks a lot like Dragon Quest Monsters, which is another similar. It's like it falls within that vein of a video game, especially on the handheld. I don't know if you play Dragon Quest Monsters at all. But it was basically I didn't the play same Dragon thing. Quest Monsters. I played or Dragon you... Quest uh, Sentinel of the Starry Skies, and that's the only one I played. Well, I, I'm just I'm ex- I'm not as excited for stories as I am for X because I don't know. It seems like a softer uh, installment. Into I the want. Series. I'm worried they're making too many. It's looking like it's yearly releases, and that's oh, a bad no. habit for a development team like this. You well, guys, your best content is when it takes a little while to get out there, and then you guys have plenty of weapons. When you guys release a new numbered release, it tends to have a lot of new stuff that isn't on the last one. And I feel like if you keep doing yearly releases like this, you're kind of spreading yourself thin and watering down your game. Well, the thing about uh, stories is, uh, according to... There's three directors working on this game. Uh, Two of them have history within the Monster Hunter franchise as being directors or head developers. And the third one is um, he did work on... I can't quite remember. It is some... mm, I don't know. He did... He's... You can probably find out. There's three directors in the making of this uh, game. And... According to them, this has been the concept of an RPG Monster Hunter game uh, was made like six, five, six years ago. So the concept is something they've been pondering for a long time, and they didn't start development on this game until two years ago. And they're not uh, the release of the game is planned for 2016. So development mm-hmm. on this game has been going on for over th- uh, uh, well, when it releases for over three years. Which is, I think, you know, that's a pretty good I checked the Wikipedia after I uh, checked out stories, and it does turn out that there are quite a bit of uh, Monster Hunter spinoffs. There's at least six other Monster Hunter spinoffs that uh, mm-hmm. didn't even come stateside. But then again, stories and ten, it could be the possibility, although scary it may be, that these games don't ever come stateside. I think Monster Hunter 10 at the least will come stateside, but I don't know about stories. Well, they got to think about whether the demand's going to be high, but the thing is, is 3DS games don't really have a history of uh, them not coming over to the console. So, they'll probably be over because, uh, well, the 3DS has a good history of releasing everything that comes out on it. We'll uh, have to see how it hurt. I'm, I'm still kind of trepidatious as for uh, my thoughts about uh, stories, but I'm pretty... Pretty sure I'm going to enjoy Monster Hunter X, or 10, whatever you want to call it. I'm pretty sure it's X. Because it's it just Monster looks Hunter like, Cross. It, it just looks like <laughs> more of the same stuff that I enjoy about Monster Hunter, so I'm okay with that. Uh, 
Well, developer, well, this is non TGS related. Well, one more TGS thing, and then I guess uh, you play. You have you played the uh, Core Dragon Quest games, mm. like the numbered releases? Oh yeah, yeah, I played seven. Curse of the most people game. have played eight or so. I think that was the one on the PlayStation Two. Oh yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. I um, played eight. And you like Minecraft, right? Yeah. Why not mix the two? Dragon Quest Minecraft. It's. It may sound a little weird, but it is something that is in development and has been announced. Dragon Quest Builders. Oh. It's a reimagining of the first Dragon Quest game with Minecraft elements. Okay. And it's not like little Minecraft elements. It's full voxel sandbox Minecraft. So, but if it's a sandbox, then how is it a story? That's what you got to sacrifice with Minecraft style gameplay, but then again, it's an off-release series, and I think they said something about uh, some other Dragon Quest. Uh, there's a Dragon Quest that's like Hyrule Warriors that's coming out. You know what I want? I think I they're trying to find out what people are interested in so that they can the release one. Yeah, kind of like what uh, Square did with the billions of Final Fantasy sevens. Yeah. Why don't they just re-release? I would throw my money at anything you wanted if they said that they were going to re-release uh, Dragon Quest VIII. Because that was so good. That was my really I didn't really care first... for VIII. I, I felt like it was a little archaic with all the controls and stuff, but no, it was I so ended up good. playing it after I already played on the 360, so my opinion of uh, archaic is a little warped already. You were, we're talking about the one with the, the Toad King, right? I'm talking about the one with the main character who dresses up like Bulma in uh, like Dragon Ball with, Z, with the, like an orange bandana. outfit and with the, the bandana. bandana. Yeah, 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 that's it. Yeah, no, that game was so good. I loved the characters. I didn't really give it I much of a chance, monsters. though. It was so good. That was my really. F- that was the first RPG I ever became really super interested in because it was so awesome. I loved that game, and because of that, by extension, I love pretty much anything else, any other Dragon Quest game that releases. All right, and, uh, I mean, some uh, non-TGS news. Uh, do do people even want this? Is what I'm questioning. There's another Five Nights at Freddy's being released, uh, and it's not a horror game. Uh, it's called FNAF World, and it's going to be an RPG game. The thing is, is that Five Nights at Freddy's survives based on its YouTube presence, and that YouTube presence is making people scream with, uh, I'm, I'm not going to say fake reactions, but overreacting. It it then, lost its luster after the first it loses, one, I think. Yeah. And uh, how many times has uh, Scott Cawthon said that he's done making them, or that this is going to be the last uh, entry? Yeah, he said that the third one's going to be the last one. And then he comes out, and it, well, he didn't say the third one was gonna be the last one. He, everyone just was like, "Oh, no okay, one ever says this is gonna be my last line of coke," and that's what Scott's doing. And then he was like, "Oh, the fourth one's gonna be the last one," and then he's like, "Oh, but in Halloween there's gonna be like an update to it," and then on the anniversary of the release of the first one there's gonna be another one, and I'm just like, "Oh my god!" And I can tell. Just that, say you're not gonna stop. It. <laughs> The I don't have anything against the guy at all. I'm just thinking it's what it's like the dwindling. games are six months apart. Like yeah, no, you can't get that. more oversaturated than that. Not People make that. fun of Call of Duty for coming out yearly. Five Nights at Freddy's comes out like less than six months apart it, from each. They released four games at one in point. One there year. was three in one year. <laughs> so I mean, it's it's uh, it's dwindling definitely. The interest in the game itself is. Uh, I mean, I see far less people with usernames like Chica or Foxy or whatever the fuck. I haven't seen a gamer tag on Xbox at all with those names, but yeah. I haven't. It, I yeah. haven't either, and I on Xbox. But it's for like other gaming systems, oh, yeah. mostly online forums, because everyone thinks they can be a Foxy or a Chica or a Bonnie or a whatever the fuck. Like it's Foxy with like twenty X's. Yeah, it's something stupid like that with a um, exclamation point and plus sign ampersand. Just really dumb things. Ghost in the Shell, the anime, Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex, is getting a online game uh, through Nexon. And I saw the trailer for it recently. Don't know if it's TGS related or not, because uh, I, it didn't have TGS in the title, but it is a Japanese game. And the trailer for it, 
it looks like every COD trailer ever. Explosions, Pop. people screaming. Uh, explosions. It plays uh, that one song, "Welcome to the New Age." To the New Welcome Age. Oh, the whoa, new whoa. Age. Yeah, yeah, don't sing it. Don't sing it. <laughs> we get copyrighted. That's <laughs> yeah, why Imagine Dragons or some shit. It plays that song, and it just has a bunch of killing and shit like that, and guns and stuff. And I was never really into Ghost in the Shell, but this game looks like a lot like Call of Duty, and that makes me want to play it because I Call of Duty clones. I, I don't actually mind Call of Duty clones. Like uh, Blacklight was good. I, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't like it, especially if it's shameless. I just don't care for it. I'd rather play Call of Duty. Yeah, it's going to be a its own game, it. though. It actually looks pretty good. The uh, anime characters look uh, pretty realistic. Like they don't look like stereotypical uh, besom, B- big eye, small mouth. Yeah. Uh. I think the only Ghost in the Shell game I played was on the PSP years ago, and I didn't care for that either. So I'm probably not going to care for this, especially right, if it's a clone. The last bit of news is actually a bit of real news. Uh, you like Jim Gaffigan? I love Jim Gaffigan. Comedian. Yeah, I watched a few of his uh, specials. I, I don't like watch them religiously like I do Dimitri Martin or anything like that. Huh. But. Uh, he announced on Conan that he is he's going to be performing stand up for Pope Francis. Oh my god, really? Yeah. That's I can awesome. hear the smile. I can hear the <laughs> smile coming That's from me right now. That's fucking awesome. Now, Pope Francis doesn't speak English even a little. He speaks Latin and Italian. Okay. And uh so... they're going to be they're going to have translators. <sighs> It's not funny and, if you have to translate it. Yeah, it's not as funny because the because whole point of stand-up comedy, comedy is, is the person has timing. to be animated. And Jim Gaffigan does this thing where he, like, changes his voice. Like, yeah, he'll do high-pitched high at some voice. times. Yeah, yeah exactly. Shit. You're not going to get that from... <laughs> All the translators got to try and translate his voice. in high-pitched tone, but chocolate cake. And it doesn't work. <laughs> it's not as funny. I, I don't but it's not just him he's performing work. for. He's performing for a million other people. And Mark Wahlberg is going to be there hosting okay. for some reason. And Aretha huh. Fla- Franklin. Okay. I'm kind of thinking this might be a joke just because yeah, what it's... the fuck is Aretha Franklin, Jim Gaffigan, and Mark Wahlberg all doing in the same place? It feels like the setup for also, a joke. Also, not for not performing for the Pope. Is this, this has never happened. Not for the Pope, I don't think. Have you have you heard some of the quotes from this Pope though? This Pope isn't actually that bad. He's a pretty good guy. He's pretty cl- he's pretty chill for you know, Catholic. I don't I don't believe uh, anything. He's that's pro gay. I mean, uh, yeah, but then like I I've seen his articles where it's like, oh, he's pro gay, and then there's those articles that are like, oh no, they just misinterpreted what he said. And then there's other things that's, like, oh, but That's it's like stupid. Fox News and shit, like, yeah, that's twisting it because Fox News. Yeah, that's why I don't care at all because I, I, there's no way for me to personally know unless I talk to the guy. And I don't trust any news sources that cover him because he doesn't speak English. If there's not a video of the guy saying All news this, is biased, I don't so care. you're oh, watching you this. News is biased. You're getting your news a week late. We've had time to like probably come up with quips and shit for this, except for the TGS stuff. That was all today. Yeah. But, uh, and it'll I be mean, going on for the next two days as well, so we might have some more TGS stuff next week. It's uh, it's dumb. I, I don't know yep. how to feel about it. I feel like it's a joke. I, I don't. Oh, I, I forgot one more it. piece of gaming news. Uh, oh. Developer calls uh, accidentally talked about Last of Us as the first one. So now everyone's like speculating. Everyone's like, oh my god, it's oh a sequel. God, there's a there's sequel. A sequel. Oh he immediately yeah. recanted on his words and tried to hide from <laughs> from social media. This sounds uh, like <laughs> it sounds like one of the things. It's one of those con- things where it's a leak in quotation marks. Yeah, it's not actually a leak, but it's just. There's one no of those... such thing as a leak anymore. People say shit and it gets them more publicity. It's just trying to make sure that people don't forget that Last of Us was a thing. I played The Last of Us on the PS4, and holy. Fuck, that game is amazing. I think it's a piece of. I think it's a piece of art. It's got. It's well written. The characters are relatable and human, and you feel bad for every one of them, and. 
especially Ellie, to be raised in this kind of environment. And she's just a kid, but yeah. I played through all of it. Some of you guys have probably seen me play it on the stream, which I don't do anymore. Hashtag teardrop. <laughs> sad. Cry every time. I was happy, and then I reminded myself I'm sad. All right. Let me pretend to be Panda. Let fan. me just throw away my note cards. <laughs> Your note cards? You write, you write this down? Yeah, I write this down so I don't forget about it. Oh, good. Oh, uh, PlayStation 4 is the leader of porn on YouPorn. Most watched, U-porn? most time spent watching. Yep. They, uh, thought... PlayStation 3 was the leader for uh, Pornhub a couple of years ago, though. Yeah, who watches so think, YouPorn, uh, though? I thought it was Pornhub. Yeah, I mean, even when I'm looking for gay stuff, I'm not saying I do. No, I do. No, I'm not, um, <laughs> not going to lie about it. Let's be honest, I have a penis. Let's I'm going to use be it. Honest. A year in that uh, last stuff, I see how it is. Pornhub. Yeah, it's it's por- probably... who does a you porn like? That's like there's someone Pornhub, going to... and then there's Red Tube. Yeah, I mean, who goes to you porn? That's like someone going to fucking Daily Motion instead of YouTube. Like, yeah, you wouldn't do that. You just go <laughs> the to hipsters of porn. He's got yeah, a strap exactly. on that's got horn room classes at the edge of it, so that the d- strap on's like fucking... the nose. And a fucking turtleneck sweater. And it's mounted on a scarf. It's really just, uh... <laughs> yeah, I know. I think Xbox won the whole you the Pornhub thing, I'm pretty sure. Because uh, I remember seeing an article about that. Like, oh, people who people on Xbox watch a lot of porn. And I'm like, great, this is... Well, and among these statistics as well, uh, the majority of people who watch it on the Wii and Wii U are female. Oh, and it was okay. a lot of stuff, like hentai and anime and stuff like that. I can That's, see, uh, Those were the search results, so... I can see why the uh, the controllers are phallic. Oh, you know face. what? That probably contributed. Yeah, there you like, go. Like, I didn't even think about it. See? You gotta think about these things. <laughs> Can't let something like that slide under the rug. Gotta point that out. Well, All right. Mean, en- you fucking enough of the... Uh... On the Wii. <laughs> Just, like, at, at least I hope you take breaks, or, like, no, yeah, don't use the Wii condom, fucking... use the actual condom. Use an actual condom on the remote, don't use the Wii condom, especially if you're female, you'll get an infection. They, they take they take breaks when the batteries run out. <laughs> well, yeah, they gotta pull it out to switch the batteries. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a pain in the ass, you gotta take I'm out so the glad condom. I bought the Wii. It's, it's so much easier to obtain double A's than it is to buy D's. <laughs> that's fucking great I just <laughs> oh my god the Wii, the Wii U personal the Wii's in the lead for anime and hentai though is it? Well, is that just like based on the number of people on that like what they look for on that it's the based console? on the percentage of people that have looked at that now the thing is that so, I, I've used the browsers on these consoles and I have never used them once to look up porn just because they're clunky I've got a tablet and I think that's way easier plus it's portable take it with you in the bathroom take it with you on, on the subway on the bus on the sidewalk if you're a hobo and then tell people when they're uh, asking you why you're watching porn on the bus tell them you got an adrenaline deficiency and you need to watch porn to keep your metabolism <laughs> up why are you masturbating? It's an actual yeah, thing. That's a side effect. That's a side effect. It's it's a hand twitch. Don't look at it. Look at me. In the eye. Oh, yeah. Look at me. There we go. Yeah, almost oh. done. Almost done. Almost done. Oh, okay, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. What's that, your name? I want to be able to scream it at the end. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this turned graphic. Maybe me and you shouldn't spend alone time on the uh, podcast anymore. I know. <laughs> we might face. need to get a third person. <laughs> Yeah, we need Panda in here. I need to get to a break third person fucking... as a buffer. Like, we need a straighty in here. We need Panda in here to break up the sexual tension because I have it so much right now. Let me tell you. Uh... Uh, you, sound, <laughs> you sound like you're in it, into it. <laughs> no, I'm not. I mean, I, mm, I'm, mm, I don't know how to feel. You can't wait okay. to feel that weird, scraggly neck beard all over your body. Oh, God. Can you not? <laughs> Please, for the love of God, no. <laughs> No, I shaved now. Let's go. Oh, God, not again. Oh, God, not again. <laughs> not again. This happens often. All right, just, uh, that uh, that turned into 30 minutes of gaming news and, and porn sexual stuff. Tension. 
It was building uh, okay. from the moment now we started. Now onto the actual Destiny stuff, and that's uh, that's pretty good timing because they can just jump straight to thirty minutes to get to it. Yeah, well, there you go. So, uh, um, what did you like best of uh, the uh, Taken King so far? Well, the best thing I've liked, um, the thing I like most about the Taken King. Let's uh, let's skip this. Everything that was missing from Destiny, the base game. The Taken King is like this. Imagine a frame of a painting, right? There's a frame of a painting. And Destiny was the frame, and the Taken King is actu- the actual painting. Now, there's something I'd beautiful. like to think of it more like this, that the uh, painting, you know how right before you do the painting, you draw on it with, like, lead pencil, and then you fill oh, in the you paint? sketch it, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I think Destiny was the sketch. I think they were like, "This is what this is what the game is. This is the actual gameplay of it." And I, we do want to fill this in. I um. And they've been slowly doing that. Well, I read an article, not an article, it's speculation from uh, someone I listened to and respect. Uh, he said that Destiny to him was basically an MVP. And MVP is business a business acronym for minimum val, uh, viable product. So this is the least amount of effort you can put into something and release it, and it still sells. Yeah, there's something like that in uh, games, too. It's called min-maxing, minimum effort, maximum results. Yeah, that, that's exactly what uh, he speculated that Destiny was, the first release of Destiny. Uh, yeah, but Taken that. King expansion gets rid of all thoughts of that for at least me because the uh, main game has what three cutscenes throughout the entire thing, maybe yeah, four. Yeah, fair. Yeah. When you play Taken King, you get a introductory cutscene to the game that's about thirty seconds long, maybe a minute. And yeah, it's like two. After minutes, that, almost. they esta- in the video they establish who the good people are, who the bad people are. Um, who the main why villain you is, give a shit. and why you should give a shit, and now you suddenly give a shit and you hate this guy and you want to punch him in the taint. I literally said those words when I first played, I'm going to punch you in the taint, Oryx. And that's exactly it. I mean, there's more story in the first ten minutes of The Taken King than there was in the entire game of Destiny. And you're talking to someone who played Destiny a thousand hours, just during they the first shouldn't have DLC waited this release. long to provide this content, though, and that's yeah, what it's... we were talking about when they first said that they were going to fix it in future DLC. I don't like this "fix it later" attitude, but I mean, Destiny gets the luxury of doing that because it's a AAA developer, and they've already announced that the game's going to be going for ten years. So, I mean, uh, so... I don't think Destiny's going to last that long. I really don't I think don't. Destiny's well, going to we'll last see. the full ten years. It might. It might last ten years. I mean. There's if they keep this up, if they keep making it so that each subsequent DLC is better than the last, I think, yeah, I think it's going to last well into the end of this console. Well, but they need to they need to do what they can to sell copies my, my and keep people playing. My complaint with Destiny so far is with each subsequent DLC drop, all the DLC, all the previous DLC that was released becomes null and void. You might as well have not even had it. Like, the latest uh, deal is, like, what, 60, 80 bucks for the entire game plus all the DLC and the new DLC? That doesn't even matter. Be- and, they might as well just sell you the new game and the Taken King because you're not going to play that old content because there's nothing Vision of there Confluence, uh, a popular weapon from the uh, first raid in the game. Uh, what was it? Uh, what was that first raid called? Vault of Glass. Vault of Glass. Vision of Confluence, one of the most sought-after weapons in the uh, in the thing, because it's a solar it's a solar-based scout rifle. After the update, my uh, Vision of Confluence got its attack lower to 150. 170 is what the exotic started at, and then 160 is what the uh, legendary started at. So the Vision of Confluence was 10 below the par for other legendaries. And this was a raid legendary. So it's like what you said. With each subsequent DLC release, the base content and the DLC contents start to get phased out and not matter as much because I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to appeal more to the new audience or the newer audience so that people don't feel like they missed out on something by not playing the other DLC. 
but there's nothing there for them. Like you can go back. There's no and reason play. to go back unless you there's want to get no achievements. Point. Uh, you can go back and play Vault of Glass if you want to, but there's nothing there for you. Anything you get is going to be old equipment that is no use to you. you we don't know need... that for sure, though, because tonight we're going to play later, and we're going to do we're the Vault of Glass, and yeah. we're going to see if the weapons drop at a higher light sure. level. But even so, what about um, what about uh, the House of Wolves? There was the whole eccentric light thing there's no weapons that can use that anymore etheric there's light, no point yeah. etheric light there's no anything point to that's that. beyond level 20 doesn't use etheric light anymore now we all use infusions which takes a new weapon dismantles it and adds the attack stat onto the weapon that you're infusing it into well it doesn't add the com- like for instance if you have a 250 and you're dismantling it puts it at like 249 yeah it won't put the uh the it'll top put just amount. a couple points under yeah, which just enough to sucks. make your weapon stay relevant. I I don't like that because I mean, but the thing is, nickel uh, and a diamond for just one point. I had uh, two two eighties, and my thing was a two fifty, and I updated it to two uh, seventy nine, and then I did it again, and it made it and to two eighty. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, it's just to make sure that it's not a fluke, that you're not max power instantly. It just it. I understand it. I just eh. But the thing is, is that with this, uh, the way the infusion works now, it makes you focus around a base set of weapons and a base set of armor, and then nothing else. There's no reason to have anything else other than your pre-set up stuff, because you're dismantling it constantly to make your current equipment better. You either do that, or you just keep equipping the newest thing, and I can't do the newest thing all the time, because the hand cannons recoil too much. I, I'm and, gonna go ahead and tell you the yeah. new the vault of glass isn't gonna drop things that are good for us because when I checked it earlier, it says required level 26 and we're 40. Required light 26? No, required oh, level, level 26. 26. So okay. I'm pretty sure we're gonna blow through that. It's not even gonna be an issue, and we're gonna get a bunch of old material that we can't use for anything. That we'll just have to trade if in they're for gonna, faction th- reputation. What they need to do to make this content more relevant is they need to provide a much higher difficulty level for like 240 light or 260 light so that people actually have a reason to go back and do these things so that we can update our uh, outdated legendaries. Like, I like the Vision of Confluence. I liked Praetis Timepiece and all that kind of stuff. It's just I don't get to use them anymore, and I'll probably never get to use them again. Fatebringer yeah, is a popular one that came from yeah, that Fate raid, Bringer too. Yeah, Fatebringer is the fucking the most popular hand cannon in the game, besides, like, the uh, last word. It's the, it's the most popular the legendary moves, in the game. And now the since everyone can get it. Um, uh, now this, is, uh, this is based on statistics. It's just... It's kind of sad, because... As each, like we said, each subsequent DLC drop, all of your efforts, all of the stuff you earned for the last one... Again, is null and void. They said that they were going to fix this with the House of Wolves, and they did fix it for the House of Wolves, but then they went back to it in the Taken King. All of your old stuff is pointless. And they said, oh, because it's year one armor. Now you need year two there's, armor. Uh, there's just... a select few things that are, do stay relevant, and that's <clears> just the uh, absolute most popular pieces of equipment and the things that they know that are balanced. Like, if you want uh, Galahorn at level 40... You're shit out of luck because the only Galahorn that's available is the Season 1 Galahorn, and that's level 20. They did not make an updated version of the Galahorn for Season 2, which everyone knows the Galahorn is the most popular rocket launcher in the entire game. And it's pretty much necessary for a lot of people to just even play. But I guess by doing that, they were, you know, they said this a while back with the shotguns update that... No, it was the assault rifle update. They said that they don't want any one weapon to be the go-to weapon. So yeah. instead of patching them, they're just phasing them out of usefulness completely. I I just I don't I don't know how to feel about it. But as it like, comes, like I have to use itself, the truth now, which is like second best, I guess. But yeah, it's one of it's one of those. I barely like have any season two ones. of the weapons. Yeah, because like, you only get the ones five. that they give you. Yeah, I. There's the five that come from the base game, and that's like the last word, the Soros regime, bad juju, red death. Ones that you got from the base game through the exotic bounties missions. Except the and thorn. then I got the truth. It, the thorn wasn't on the list for me. Yeah, I know. It wasn't there either for me, and that's what I'm saying. It's not there. Another incredibly popular weapon. The, 
Why? Thorn, I don't know. Why include That's everything else but not this one? The most yeah. popular equipment in the game is left out and only available for level 20s. Like, they put the legacy playlists in for PvP. What am I going to do? Go back to legacy playlist and PvP and play with people who have the Thorn? No, thank you. It's... The Thorn... The thorn was annoying, possibly overpowered. Well, in PvP, and, and it instantly matter. turned you into a dick bag. In PvP, but, it doesn't matter. But legacy playlist just... does. The legacy playlist puts you back at the max light level of thirty-four, and you're playing with people at that light level. And this is like the this these are people that one seventy is still good equipment for them. But in Crucible, your stats are rounded out anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Like, you can be using, you can have a light level 1 and kill someone just as easily as a person at light level 200 can. So, go back, if you're a PvP person, stick with that level 20 gear, because it doesn't, it doesn't matter, but yeah. make sure you have, like, a level 40 set just for when you go and play PvE. Like, when we played uh, earlier today, or, yeah, earlier today... There's a guy using the Fallon Verdict, which is still probably one of the most popular shotguns for PvP, and that's a raid weapon you get from the Vault of Class. So, I mean, it's still... If you like PvP, you can probably still keep all of your gear, but if you're going just for light level for uh, raids and other in-game content, there's no point in keeping all that old legendary stuff. Yeah, me pointless. and you literally went into our vaults and destroyed every single piece of legendary and exotic equipment. Yeah, because it was more useful to turn those to turn those into ascendant shards and turn those into and energy, uh, and, then energy and then turn them, them into faction points. Yeah, because that actually progresses us. Keeping them in the bank does nothing. There's no point. There's no way. And to you can't them. infuse them. You can't infuse yeah. them at all. So there's literally no point in keeping anything that came before season two. So I mean, I'll give them a little bit of credit. This Taken King does fix a lot of the problems I have with the story of the first game. But I don't like it in a legacy standpoint. They make standpoint. it easier to level up, and they make it easier for you to continue leveling up. Like, the, you never get to a point where you're, well, so far, I don't know how it is later, but I'm at 288 light, and so far I've never gotten to a point where I was stuck at a light level and wasn't able to raise it. Like, each time I go back with a new bundle of engrams, I always find at least one piece of equipment that raises my light level. And that's that's pretty good. It's kind of like playing Diablo. Like there's always a a piece of equipment that may be the same as what you have, but it's going to be a little bit better, and you're just getting a little bit better as you go. So it's I just, mean, uh, all in all, I like the DLC. I just wish it wouldn't nullify everything I've done before. I but can't wait knows? to see what's going to be in the raid. Because yeah, I'm interested as well, but I'm going to let other people experience that first before I do it because I'd yep, rather... same as uh same as Vault of Glass, we're going to wait no, for other yeah, people yeah. to do it and then well, go back and do the it ourselves. The reason I want to wait to do it is because I want to know how strong I need to be before I do it. Because I don't want to go guessing, there and get uh, raped for I'm 5 hours. I'm guessing 280 300 light. It's probably going to be 300. And but it's always harder than it's possible, so it's going to be 300, but the enemies are going to be 310. That's They're going to be gonna... level 42 enemies, and then it's yeah. going to be 300 light. Well, we'll see how it turns out. And who knows? I mean, maybe with the future, they won't know. They'll... I mean, the way the story is in the campaign, they could possibly redo the old raids and make them harder, which would give us gear that is relevant. Yeah, Taken variant would be great, like uh, yeah. fighting uh, what, uh, Taken, the Taken version Atheon. of the Templar and whatever. I mean, it and, wouldn't yeah, make, Atheon, it wouldn't make a lot of sense in a cont- and by a continuity Why? standpoint. Why? He's of X. Yeah, but I mean, his whole mission was to... Uh, Send everything back in time. He just retcon wait. it in. Say that he uh, pr- fixed the timeline so that he still exists. Well, that's what I'm and saying. Then the Taken King revives him. Well, that's what I'm saying. It wouldn't fit by a continuity standpoint. Also, how would you kill Crota if you've already killed Crota? Because he, the Taken, wouldn't have even existed had you already killed Crota. So I, I guess mean, by by nullifying our equipment from the uh, first season, it's to cut ties with the uh, second season, so that we have no reason to go back and fight Crota. So it's not but like. But then again, uh, all that DLC is pointless. So that deal where you're like, oh my god, I'm getting four pieces of DLC and the base game for sixty bucks. That's such a deal. But in reality, you're just no, getting the you're base just game getting the base the game DLC. and the new DLC because each piece of content before it is pointless. So I mean, what are you gonna do? Well, let's let's stop talking about the negative. Uh, what was your favorite piece of content from the game? Uh, like period or 
Yeah, like I'm talking about strikes. Uh, uh, my favorite part was just story. the raids. The raids were so much fun, especially when you figured out how you to mean, do them. No, I don't mean like from the entire game. I mean from just taking King. Oh, from just taking King. Uh, well, I don't know. I haven't experienced everything yet. But I'll have to say my favorite piece of content so far is just the new subclass. It, it adds something new to an existing character I already created. It's all right, but I mean, I could have gone without it. I mean, I like the Court of Oryx a lot. And oh, yeah, I'm the, like oh, really yeah, addicted right. to my Sunbreaker, but Court of Oryx is crazy fun. Yeah, It's a piece of true. repeatable... If you haven't played the Court of Oryx yet, you should. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> it's it's a piece of repeatable content similar to the rifts in uh, Diablo, except much much smaller. You basically get rid of the entire dungeon and you fight just the boss. The bosses have unique variants in a Zelda style uh, gameplay. You know how like it's usually hit the enemy three times, they're dead. In Zelda, or there's like a specific weak spot you need to hit, and then you can do that. Yeah. It's kind of like that. There's these two uh, there's these two sword knights. Their shields are impervious unless you get them close to one another, and then one of their shields break, and then you yeah. kill that one, and then the other one's shield break, and you kill them. Yeah, the boss fights in the Taken King, are act, they actually feel like boss fights. They're not giant bullet sponges like every other boss so far in the game. Uh, like before, oh, and they, they reduced so the bullet health. sponginess. Like, all the bosses have a lot less health than they did before. The uh, damage seems to have gone up, though. Well, I mean, against the Vex Mine, it didn't. That still took a long time to kill him. The Undying so... Mine. Yeah, the Undying Mine. It was still a pain in the ass because he still had 8 billion health. And not to mention those stupid shields. He was shields. a lot less bullet spongy, though, as compared to, like, uh, what was it? Uh... I haven't played any of the old content, so I couldn't tell you if I noticed anything dying quicker What was the, uh, what was that big floaty one that uh, was in the Night Falls all the time? The uh, it was like the Templar, but he had one giant shield. The Hive Mind, I think it was. Uh, the um, Vex Mind. I, f- f- I don't know. I know. It I had know which one name. you're talking about. It had a it had a name, um, and I can't think of it. Yeah, I really can't think of it either. The Undying Mind definitely um, had less health than Valus to Oric, though. Yeah, Valus to Oric was a pain in the ass to kill. He's just so tanky and a small. So there is a notice, noticeable difference in the bosses, and but uh, the Undying Mind should have less health than the old bosses anyway, just because he has three shields and a very small hit box that you can hit. But he still has a lot of health. Like it took yeah. me and two other people like two, fifteen minutes to kill him, and I mean we were appropriate light levels. So I mean I don't know. Well, I like how I like... the uh, the game has more teamwork now too, because well just between the Hunter and the uh, Titan. There's so yeah. much teamwork now between the new classes. Uh, you tether them down, and then they take double damage because they're tethered. And then I just bust out the hammers. And you just It's like so 13,000 a hammer hit. It's, it's stupid. It destroys it just about all bosses. And the swords are really good, too. I was expecting the swords to be a problem. And I said this when right before the swords came out. I said that if they do put swords in the game, they need to increase our defense while holding the swords. Otherwise, we're going to die a lot. Yeah, and I mean, that's another thing and they, they did. fixed. I mean, they made it to where most of the bosses, they still have an AoE if you get close to them, but they don't insta-kill you like every other AoE in the game does. Like, uh, there what was, was his no... name? The Archon Priest. Oh, yeah, exactly. He would just slam his fist down and fucking knock you back a thousand miles and kill you. Yeah, that's that's what was making shotguns irrelevant. Not that shotguns had shit range, but that the bosses had AoEs that could insta-kill us. That it liter- that the game literally punished us for getting us to- getting too close. Yeah, and now that's they what shotguns that. are for. You can get close to bosses and hit them now. Shotguns I mean, are so relevant. Like, when I'm yeah. not using my sword, I'm using my shotgun. Like, I use my I'm, shotgun I'm really more than glad. my assault rifle. The game today, Destiny today, is better now than it has ever been. And I can only suspect, with time, it'll get even better. So if you haven't gotten Destiny yet, and you're thinking about it, don't. Wait. Because I guarantee you, with time, there will be a better release of Destiny. And not only that, it will come with all the DLC from before and... At a low price, like we saw it with the Taken King. You can get the Legendary Edition for sixty or seventy bucks or whatever, and you get all the old DLC, and plus all the bugs and fixes that were there before are fixed. 
So you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to go through the shit that people who there play Destiny Day 1 There is one benefit to buying to. it now, though, compared to, uh, like, buying it earlier. Like, uh, if you've been playing Destiny consistently, you probably have a character that's above level 25. But upon getting the DLC, the Taken King, you go to the tower, and the uh, mail robot, the robot that gives you your mail... They give you a crystal that makes it so that a l- character below level 25 is instantly leveled up to level 25, which is the lowest level for the Taken King content. So this definitely caters to new players because it makes it so that they can experience just the new content immediately, which has actually been pretty popular in MMOs lately, okay. like World of Warcraft and uh, Star Wars The Old Republic. They've so, both gotten systems where you start at the cap. This is getting a little long-winded, but all in all... Taken King is good, and I recommend if you like Destiny, you'll love Taken King. Um, at the same time, if you hate I, Destiny, you might enjoy Taken King. Yeah, same thing. I but, hate I mean, Destiny, I, I really do, but Taken King, it's, yeah, I I've hate it. I smiled hate for now a long time too. more than ever while playing Destiny. Okay, I'm not so a person who has fun playing games. We wrap this up. Because, yeah, we're approaching I mean, 50 minutes. Yeah, it's been a long time just talking about Destiny, and we basically said the same thing. Um, so, I mean, I guess this is the end of the podcast. My name is Sly. My name is Runchy Ram. And we'll see you next time on Booty Salad. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Like, subscribe. And share. Oh my god, I really gotta piss. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>